Do women have Adam's apples? That is the question. I'm Dr. Sarah Saxon, double board certified facial plastic surgeon, and I'm here to answer your question. So all mammals, both men and women, technically have the anatomy to have the potential to have a prominent Adam's apple. And there are a couple of different variables of why women would have prominence in that area. So the Adam's apple is technically termed the larynx, and it's made of a couple of different structures that I'll go through a little bit later, but testosterone or exposure to testosterone can cause um, enlargement and prominence of the Adam's apple. And women can have that happen for a number of reasons. Your receptors that bind testosterone can bind more strongly, or you can naturally have a genetic predisposition to have a higher level of testosterone. There are some women that also take exogenous testosterone, so in hormone replacement therapy. I've had patients that took testosterone for fitness competitions. So for a number of reasons, especially, and I found that um, the younger you take testosterone, the higher likelihood it is, because you're still developing, that these structures can enlarge and cause a shadow or a bump in that area. Um, I also have another situation where um, women have frequently come to me if they have a very thin neck. So the cartilage in your neck is cushioned by muscles and fat. And so or if you have a very um, small amount of fat in your neck, you are more able to see all the contours of the cartilages underneath, even if they aren't that big. So a couple different situations um, that we can address there. Um, just to go a little bit more in depth on anatomy because the head and neck has the most complex anatomy in the body, I want you to understand why this occurs. So this is a cross section of a head, fun model here. Um, this is, if you can imagine the Adam's apple here, but this is your nasal airway or passages in your nose. This is um, your mouth or your oral airway. They converge right here to um, your larynx. And so behind here is your esophagus, it's where you swallow, and up here is your windpipe where you breathe. So um, if you were to zoom into this area a little more, um, you would see this guy here called the larynx. And so <laughs> a lot of structures in this area. One, you have the hyoid bone here. It's a free-floating bone in your body. This is the thyroid cartilage, um, or what forms your Adam's apple. You have muscles attached to it here. Underneath is called the cricoid cartilage. This cartilage forms a solid ring, so it's the first ring of your windpipe. Um, and you also have muscles here. They contract and relax when you talk or swallow or breathe. We have your thyroid gland here. And then, of course, farther down um, is your trachea, or your windpipe. So um, a lot of things going on here. If you were to get a bird's eye view of what this looks like, it looks like this. So this right here is your epiglottis. It uh, closes your airway when you swallow to prevent you aspirating any fluid or solid food. And then if you look even farther down, it's where your vocal cords, they form a little A shape. Um, so this is what I can see in surgery. We can do surgeries specific to your vocal cords and all these other parts. Um, but if you were to see on the inside, there's a cross section of your larynx here. Um, your Adam's apple is right here, the front of the thyroid cartilage, and your vocal cords attach to it right here. And this area is called the anterior commissure. Um, the cartilage, if it enlarges, widens, and sinks down. And that lengthens your vocal cords, causing you to have a little bit deeper voice. Um, so hopefully that makes it a little more clear what we're dealing with with anatomy. If you have an enlarged um, Adam's apple, what I have to do is ensure that that anterior commissure is not disrupted. So I'm able to remove cartilage above the vocal cords, but not below it, because that would affect your voice. And if you're interested in learning more details about that procedure, I have a couple of other videos related to that, um, both for complications and what that actual procedure is. Now, if you have what looks like enlargement of your Adam's apple because you don't have a lot of fat in your neck, there are some options. One is fat injection, but if you already don't have a lot of fat in your neck, you probably don't have a lot of fat elsewhere. <laughs> there are some uh, materials, one is called alloclay that 
was recently launched and that is donated fat that all the DNA components have been removed and your body regenerates fat around it. There's also a, a honeycomb fat matrix called Renuva. So there are some regenerative treatments that we can try. There are some fillers that can help build collagen in the area, although um, I haven't seen um, very predictable results with it. It's things like hyperdilute radius or Sculptra. Um, you can also try something called Easy Gel, which is a platelet-rich fibrin gel matrix to help build collagen in that area and a little bit of volume, but that's going to be pretty subtle. I hope this shines more light on the question of whether women can have a prominent Adam's apple. Certainly this is the case, and I have women come to me from all over the country to have that reduced. If that's something that bothers you, please let us know. But also if you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'm happy to answer.